Hi friends, a very warm welcome back to our channel. I am Chandamama. This is your Chandamama bringing you a new story today. The title of this story is The Rant of the Crocodile. So let's move towards the story. Mandara Deva, the king of Marala Island, was taking a walk in his garden when he heard a great commotion in the direction of the fort gate. There was the tumultuous noise of the crowd and the sharp cries of the guards. Wondering what it could be, Mandara Deva proceeded towards the gate. He arrived at the gate and saw his minister exhorting the people to be calm. Some of the guards saw the king coming and told the minister about it. The minister turned around and walked up to the king. What is all this? The king asked the minister. Sir, it is only a rumor for the time being. The minister replied, though I am afraid there may be some truth in it. The fact is, he added, looking towards the gate, some fishermen have brought news that we are going to be attacked by Naravahana of Kundalini. We already know that there has been a great revolt of the people in Kundalini and that there was anarchy. It appears that Naravahana, an army chief, declared himself king. Having heard that Naravahana is a marching on us, our people have become panicky. I am advising them to be calm. King Mandara Deva nodded his head in approval. I am hoping to learn the truth before sunset. The minister went on. Our spies will be back soon. In any case, I have sent word to our commander in chief to take all precautions against an invasion. Well, Mandara Deva said, after some moments of thinking, inform me of the facts as soon as you hear them. I shall be waiting for you. Then he turned and walked back towards the palace. The minister climbed up on to one of the battlements from the top of the fort wall. From here, one could get a view of the ocean for several miles. The minister peered into the distance and saw a lone ship on the horizon. Every minute, it was becoming more distinct. Undoubtedly, it was the intelligence ship which the minister was waiting for impatiently. He looked up and saw the sky, becoming overcast with dark, fearsome clouds. He sighed, wondering what the clouds portend for to his beloved country. As soon as he heard from the minister, the commander-in-chief began to assemble an army. The Marala island was very often subject to invasion from the neighboring island states. So every male citizen was taught soldiering by the order of the king. The commander-in-chief proceeded to the coast with a big contingent of soldiers. The navy was being made ready for the battle with the enemy ships, should it become necessary. Signals were sent out through the blowing of the conches and the beating of drums, ordering the marines to report themselves for duty. The minister, who was standing on the fort wall, could see all this activity. He felt very happy at the alertness of the commander-in-chief and his other officers. But his happiness was short-lived. For what he had mistaken for a dark cloud on the horizon now turned out to be a fleet. It was the enemy fleet which was fast overtaking the intelligence ship. Dark spurts of smoke appeared amidst the enemy fleet and flaming arrows raced towards the intelligence ship. Now the minister knew that the news brought by the fishermen was quite accurate. The minister grounded his teeth in rage. He could not understand this Naravahana of Kundalini who was making an invasion without either a warning or an ultimatum. The minister had heard of only one person who had behaved in this fashion. That person was the sorcerer Saketya, who was plundered, who had plundered several islands. Some two centuries back, without warning his victims, but then he was not really a king, but a sorcerer and his inconsiderate behavior could be understood if not admired. The Marala Navy must have sighted the enemy fleet for the ships left the coast and began to go out to meet the enemy. 
the marines shouted fiercely as the ships sailed forward at a great speed. The two fleets met for a battle in the couple of miles out from the Marala shore. In the meantime, the Marala soldiers began to come onto the fort walls to take their positions in defense of the fort, in case if the navy failed to hold or beat back the enemy. The minister called one of the soldiers and ordered him to go to the king and inform him about the situation. When he again turned towards the sea, the naval fight was going on furiously. Both sides were fighting desperately. They were trying to set fire to the ships belonging to the other side by throwing flame arrows. Some ships caught fire and their crew were jumping into the waters to save themselves while the enemy who got possession of these burning ships were trying to put out the fires which they themselves had caused. As the minister watched the course of the naval battle, he began to doubt whether his navy would come out victorious. He was very anxious that the intelligence ship should arrive, for with it he would get reliable information regarding the affairs of Kundalini and the recent changes that had taken place there. It was essential that he should know about Naravahana and the people over whom he now ruled. The minister heard somebody running and panting and turned to turned back. The soldier whom he had sent to the king was coming back as he thought he was being chased. What happened? The minister asked him anxiously. Why have you raced back to me? His majesty is not to be find, found anywhere. The soldier gasped. What do you mean? The minister demanded. How can you say that? Sir, the soldier replied. When I went to the palace, I found it in confusion. A couple of maids said they had heard the king cry for help from his chamber a few minutes before. Then the guards searched for him everywhere in the place, but found no trace of him. Two of his bodyguards are also missing. The minister suspected treachery when he heard of the missing bodyguards. He thought that this might be another manifestation of the strange morality which Naravahana, the new ruler of Kundalini, was putting into practice. But what was to be done now? The entire palace had already been searched. That meant the king had already been taken beyond the fort. Yet the king's abductors could have not gone very far. Having argued it thus, the minister took a handful of soldiers with him and began to run along the top of the fort walls, looking down below for the king. His quest was fruitful. In a certain place, the minister saw three men going down a rope, one end of which was tied to a peg in the fort wall. There they are, he shouted to his soldiers, his majesty and his bodyguards. What was to be done now? He could cut down the rope which the three of them were descending. But if he did so, not only the treacherous bodyguards, but also the king would fall down and die. Nor could he stand there watching the rascals about to abduct the king. Very close to the fort wall, there was a moat and across the moat, a narrow plank serving a bridge. Beyond the moat, the minister saw the three horses harnessed for riding. Soon the rascals would take the king over the plank and ride away with him. Those bodyguards must have been the spies of Naravahana, sent for the express purpose of abducting the king. The minister looked towards the sea and found his intelligence ship very near to the shore. But he also saw that two of the Kundalini ships had almost reached the shore. The situation was getting more and more dangerous. He turned to the soldiers and said, I want four of you to go to the rescue of His Highness and the Majesty. Let no one know of this mission. Hurry up! Four of the soldiers volunteered and hazarded away to the rescue of the king. When the minister looked down again, the two traders were leading the king towards the horses on the other side of the moat. The king was walking in front and the other two walked behind with their swords drawn. Soon they got the king upon one of the horses and made him ride ahead while they rode behind. The minister saw that they were making for the shore. Presently, the four soldiers forming the rescue party rode out of the east gate and raced 
in the same direction in which the king had been taken. The traitors heard the sound of the horses galloping, looked behind and found that they were being pursued. They touched the king in his back with the points of their swords and made him gallop his horse. The minister, who was still on the fort walls, saw everything. He looked once at the king who was being abducted and once at the shore which the enemy fleet was now approaching, put his hands on his chest, saw the overcast sky and said, O oh, Mother Marali, what is in store for us? As if an answer to him, there was a loud peal of thunder and dazzling flash of lightning, which appeared to shake the entire island for a few moments. So this was the end of the story. The Rand of the Crocodile, published in the Chanda Mama magazine for you guys. So till I come back with a new episode and a new story, till then stay safe and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye.